so I started out by making a quick sketch and a general construction plan for the dress, keeping in mind some subtle design changes so I could make it as wearable and as affordable as possible. The real dress was made of pure silk that apparently ripped so many times on set that they had to make multiples of each piece. Considering my complete lack of high class lifestyle, or social life to begin with, I couldn't justify making this out of something like silk satin or silk charmeuse to only wear it once a year if I'm lucky. I wanted to find something comfy and durable that wouldn't break the bank or take absolutely forever to get here. I was inspired by the wrap dresses that I've worn to a few weddings and decided that a four-way stretch knit would be the most comfortable and cost-effective option and it would still look nice enough to wear to a formal event if I somehow ever find myself invited to one. So while I waited for the fabric to arrive, I used some scrap fabric to start the mock-up process. And I'll be the first to admit, I had absolutely no idea how to even start this. So I just kind of began draping and marking the side seams and cutting the excess fabric as I went. For the bodice, I took another giant scrap piece, draped it over the mannequin, and once it was all pinned in place, I marked the center front and started marking the v-neck shape. And then I cut all the excess fabric as I went. Once I had the center back marked and all cut out, I started working on how far down I wanted the bodice to go in the back. I know hers technically isn't even there and her straps kind of just attach to the back of the skirt, but since I want this to be a little more durable and actually stay in place, I figured I would make it just a little higher and attach the straps to the bodice instead of the skirt. So on the real dress, the waistband and the hip sashes are actually one or two continuous pieces that wrap around the front and fasten with buttons on the back. I didn't want to have to do a bunch of wrapping every time I wore this, and honestly I don't love how messy it looks anyway. So I made them all separate pieces. For the waistband, I cut out a large piece and pinned it down about two inches from the edge so I can sew it down and scrunch it into shape and having the raw edges meet. Once I had all the pieces cut out, then I made sure that they looked good on the mannequin and I sewed them all up with a zigzag stitch. Then I did a quick try on to make sure that everything fit good and I liked the general shape. And then I finished all of the skirt edges with my pinking shears. Then I moved on to cutting out the waistband pinning it down to the mannequin, and sewing it down to the skirt with a zigzag stitch. Then I gathered it up in a way that I liked, making sure that the raw edges met the raw edge of the skirt, so I could baste it all later after I make the hip pieces and sew up the back. After making sure that I liked the size and shape of the hip pieces, I cut out two of them and made them longer and narrower towards the bottom. I didn't really have a method to this next part, I just kind of gathered at the widest part of each of the pieces and pinned them into place when I liked how they looked. I was just careful to make sure that the top of the pieces met the waistband and ended at the mannequin's butt. I took inspiration from this recreation prom dress I found online. So this is why I ended up making the hip pieces so long. Instead of making the sash a separate and permanent piece that probably wouldn't stretch with the dress and maybe pop, I thought why not just take the hip wraps, make them longer, and tie them into place. So I did, and I loved it. 
which means the skirt was officially done! And here's where I started absolutely freaking out because I tried it all on once I sewed the back and I just could not believe that all of this had actually worked despite me having absolutely no plan or pattern or any idea of what the heck I was doing. <laughs> the one thing I didn't end up doing was this triangle dart piece thingy. Um, I ended up loving how it looked without it and I didn't really feel like it needed all the extra fullness since this was supposed to be a less formal version anyway, so I just didn't do it. I mostly followed Jackie Wire's tutorial here on YouTube, which I highly recommend and I will link up above. Then I finished off the overall look with some cheek dupes for the screen accurate hair accessories, which I will provide links for in the description below. Congratulations! You're now ready to square up with your little sister who ruined your life and then later wrote a book about it. Thank you so much for watching this wild ride and I really hope you learned something or that it inspires you to make your own atonement dress.